welcome to a series of opinion videos where we'll be talking to various individuals who have been working in a variety of industries. Well, I'll be your host, Ashara Ninoki, and today we will be joined by Chanak Vijay Singha, who has been working in the marketing industry for quite a number of years and has worked as a creative head and also as an art director. So today he's here to give his opinions on what the creative industry and the creative sector of the marketing industry is just like. Welcome, hope you're feeling well. We're Thank jumping you. into the first question. In your opinion, are creatives born or are creatives made? I think creatives are made mm -hmm. uh, because um, I personally believe that when you're born, you're born as like an empty shell mm -hmm. and then you gather information as you go and then you build a character or yeah. personality or even a creative in that sense. Okay, that's cool. kind of cool. Uh, so can anyone learn to be a creative? Yes, of course. Uh, again, going back to my belief, uh, I think I also... I'm also someone who learned creativity later. Mm -hmm. uh, although I had a knack for creativity or even in a loose sense art, yeah. um, I discovered that there is this thing called creativity, which is like you know, which is you know, using different perspectives to explain something uh, in a novel way. Mm -hmm. So all those things I learned later. Uh, so definitely there is there are ways to learn creativity. Yeah. Probably through tools, mm -hmm. sometimes through education as well, mm -hmm. uh, which we lack in Sri Lanka though, sadly. Uh, but probably there are uh, ways that anyone can learn creativity. Uh, there is a way to uh, harness your whatever the creative, creative thought process or mm -hmm. if you have some perspective that is different, uh, which you can identify as creativity, yeah. uh, there is a way to change that around and make a creative mind out of your uh, yeah. self also so uh, do you follow a creative process i actually do okay uh, it's it's uh, <laughs> um i it's not only one process mm -hmm. uh, there are few processes that i follow okay. uh, lately i've been uh, uh, really interested uh, in a certain method based mm -hmm. process that that i follow in brainstorming mm -hmm. uh, and but there are certain times that you have to go with the gut feeling yeah. uh, but at the same time it, it matters when you do have enough information uh, to make that judgment call that's why I think uh, uh, the process that I use lately is called a ORCA method okay. so O-R-C-A mm -hmm. uh, observe, critique, relate and adapt okay. so uh, you, you do enough basically what you have to do is you do enough observations mm -hmm. about the world around you about people around you uh, the subjects that you like, you have affinities or interests towards. Mm. Uh, if you have those observations packed in, in your mind uh, well enough, mm. uh, whenever you want to sort of go to the second step of making a relationship between those observations and, and a brand or whatever yeah. the requirement is, that's, that's when you start that process. Alright, so um, in your opinion, how do you say that we can solve everyday problems by, you know, applying creative thinking? Like, can we apply creative thinking in everyday situations? I think it's hard to do that, mm -hmm. uh, but that's the beauty of it also. Okay. Um, it is, it's, it's nice if you can come up with creative solutions for everyday problems. Uh, sometimes uh, creativity because the nature of creativity which is giving a fresh new perspective mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a bit of time for people to absorb it yeah. uh, so it, it becomes a it becomes a almost like a chess game where you have to like you know take steps very carefully mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there, there are uh, there are ways that you can apply creativity to everyday situations also okay. uh, although like I said, it depends on what sort of matter you're, or problem that you're trying to solve or trying to uh, figure out. Yeah. Because some sensitivities may restrict you from using creativity in uh, giving fresh perspective, especially social issues. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's nice if you can apply creativity on an everyday basis and I think you can as well. Okay, and then if you're talking about the education system, do you think in that pathway do you think that we could maybe put a little bit of creativity into that? Definitely. I think uh, education system, I think all, already it's happening but mm -hmm. not not largely enough. 
because I know so many uh, even government school uh, teachers mm -hmm. who are applying various different techniques into teaching kids. Yeah. Even I, I'm even I'm I'm a person who suffered with maths, <laughs> uh, but uh, I was lucky enough to meet teachers who would explain to me, uh, explain maths to me visually. Okay. Uh, so that was helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that is something that has been going on. Education is a process of being creative also about mm -hmm. teaching someone something that they, that person doesn't know. Yeah. Uh, but it's not happening enough in Sri Lanka, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is various ways. I mean, like I think a good example is um, uh, education for kids with special needs. Mm -hmm. That comes mm -hmm. through creativity. Yeah, yeah. That is something that people came up with. Yeah. So I think that's that's an example I would say. All right. So how do you think the ad industry has changed in terms of you know creativity in the recent past, and what are your thoughts about it? You know, being known as an exciting and almost wild place to be in, and now is it? Do you consider it to be a bit more serious, or is that a myth, or is that a good thing or a bad thing? Okay, um, when I joined advertising okay. uh, about 15 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, there was a there was a, a time where everyone in advertising recognized it as a golden era. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think we were lucky enough to like just see the whiff of it mm -hmm. fading away. Mm -hmm. But that's I don't think that's purely because I mean it's easy to blame clients or creatives or agencies or whatever but I don't think it's I don't think it's a, a fault that we are having now because the advertising industry has you know gotten uh, somewhat limited restricted mm -hmm. uh, but that is that is I think a result of uh, us not having enough leaps in technology uh, infrastructure yeah. even people in our country have different issues than absorbing information that advertising yeah. agency would want to put out. Yeah. Uh, so in that sense, I think um, there is a, a bit of limitation. Mm -hmm. But I think through that, creativity can spark up as well, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like there are there are uh, countries and agencies and even economies that have come up with various creative solutions mm -hmm. yeah. through hardships. Yeah. So um, right now, yes. We are limited because even internationally, we are a very small market. Mm. Even if we want to do something creative for a award purpose, yeah. there's not enough money being pumped into uh, advertising campaigns. Yeah. So yes, things are getting limited, but through that, we might be able to find some nice edges also, mm -hmm. so to say. Yeah, all right. Um, so what is your advice that you would give to you know, young creatives joining the ad industry? And do you see a big difference in you know the generational difference between millennials and the Gen Zs? Yes. Um, <coughs> how do I put it? <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, the way I see it, the generation gap is very real. I mm. think we were also loosely discussing this mm. before this uh, conversation. Also, the generation gap is very real. Mm. And I think that generation gap, what we used to call the generation gap was like a decade or mm. something like that. But now the generation gap is even more smaller. Yeah. The, the time span is smaller because uh, the amount of information we absorb, the amount of uh, technologies we evolve to, mm. all those things have like vastly spread. So everyone is like evolving much faster than what we uh, expect. Uh, so because of that, the generation gap is becoming uh, much bigger. Yeah. I think the best advice I could give from the perspective, the present perspective, yeah. it might change later. Uh, but the best pers best advice I could give right now is if you keep your um, rooted ability, I would okay. say. Uh, so the uh, ability for you to absorb insights, mm -hmm. think. Uh, Think in a different way. Yeah. Uh, even even simplest things like how you communicate at home, mm -hmm. uh, or how you uh, maybe if you are watching a movie for the second time, maybe how you look at that movie. So all those things can change. So there is a point where uh, technology and the trends and all those things can't reach, mm -hmm. which is the human capacity. Yeah. So I would say if if anyone who's entering the 
industry lately or in, recent, or in the near future uh, there'll be tools that will be you in like you know art which is ai art yeah. there will be tools that will be your writing skills yeah. uh, there will be tools that will make 10 processors much faster so what is the edge the edge is your human capacity yeah. what you bring into a table bring into the table where you through all those technology mm-hmm. you make sure the message is still human you mm-hmm. talk to another person yeah. at the end of the day yeah. so if you can retain that yeah. if you can uh, and the way to retain it is by what i said observing absorbing yeah. evolving adapting uh, and bringing in the bringing in you yeah. uh, to your work so that would be the advice that i give them very interesting <laughs> well what would your advice be to lay people wanting to you know have more creativity in their life like again like you said the tools that they can use uh <coughs> literature is the lay lay people's word for this okay. um so the the deal is these days yes everyone is busy mm-hmm. everyone has a lot of uh barriers frustrations goals job i mean work jobs all those things to tend to but i think if you have some uh connection to literature in mm-hmm. some way uh, when i say literature it's not language literature mm-hmm. only uh, the literacy in something like art music mm-hmm. even listening to a song yeah. watching a movie when you go home uh maybe writing uh, a poem mm-hmm. because these are not things that we can't do yeah. even 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 when you're in like grade 2 or 3 you're taught to write or draw or do something yeah, yeah. that brings out your uh, aesthetic literacy as a human right mm-hmm. so i think having that is the key factor yeah. <laughs> so yeah. i think uh, for a for a uh, layman if you have enough uh i would say tentacles in in literature in in different types of literature mm-hmm. you will be you will absorb creativity faster yeah, right. if you if you listen to certain type of music mm-hmm. or if you listen to all types of music in that sense mm-hmm. have your mind open then uh, automatically by the time something new comes up you have enough mental space and um uh what do you call it exposure mm-hmm. to accept or at least look at it yeah, sure. and then try and absorb it all right well that has been a very interesting discussion and i hope that this you know conversation may have given you a little bit of perspective regarding the creative field of marketing and i most importantly have to give a big thanks to mr shanak vijay singh yeah, for taking his time to talk about you know his experiences his knowledge and most importantly his opinions on these certain matters Well until next time this is Tashara Ninuki hope you have a great day